So I'm an absolute fanatic about the first robotics competition, and now that I'm a mentor, I mean, I haven't designed or built a robot part in the last five years. So instead, I get to focus on the really critical items, like what I'm going to wear to competition. This year, the game is a steampunk theme, so I decided that I needed to make steampunk glasses. But when I go to competitions, I wear safety glasses for days on end, so they needed to be steampunk safety glasses. So this video is going to explain exactly how I made these steampunk frames for your safety glasses. And uh, I have all of the part files for all of the printed pieces in this assembly uh, listed in the description below. So if you want to go download those files and try to print it, that'd be awesome. The uh, entire frame actually snap fits over like safety glasses that, I mean, you probably already have, the regular standard polycarbonate safety glasses. And then uh, you can just wear the safety glasses and you've got steampunk over top of them. Now, they do slightly decrease your averted vision and they're also heavier than regular safety glasses. So they're probably not up to the same code as your regular safety glasses, which means that if you actually want to wear these at competition in the pits or something like that, that you should talk to the local safety advisor first. I started designing these glasses in Fusion 360 a few weeks ago, just after kickoff. I'm used to solid work, so leaping to Fusion had a bit of a learning curve. Unfortunately, that also means that if you try to modify the part files that I left in the description, not everything is completely constrained, so I'm sorry about that. I went with a reasonably steampunk looking design, so it's got the, the huge circular lenses and uh, a lot of extraneous stuff hanging off that just is there to look cool. I guess that's sort of what steampunk is. So. Uh, on the one side, there's the ring that comes down in front of the eye, which is a pretty standard item on uh, steampunk glasses. And on the other side, there's this gear train that actually does move if everything is sanded up perfectly. Mine's a little uh, bit sticky between the smallest gear and the second smallest gear. Um, I also have a, uh, a fake bolt on here, which is another printed part, and these two spikes, just because they're extra things to look cool that round off the gratuitous complexity that is a steampunk design. There are 18 pieces to print, and they can all be printed without support material. So I used two different printers for this project, both at the uh, Santa Barbara Hackerspace, the X-Cubex and the uh, Mendel Max. So I used the Mendel Max for most of the parts because it had a smaller uh, 0.4mm nozzle. And on both printers, uh, all of the parts that I used in the final product were printed at 0.2mm vertical resolution. So I'm here in the Santa Barbara Hackerspace working on the Steampunk Goggles project. I have been printing and printing and printing, learning a lot about these 3D printers because this is the first project that I've actually had to print something myself. I've gotten things printed for other projects like the Levitator and the Usus Machine, but now I'm actually learning to use these printers myself. So I've gone through a lot of iterations. This was the first body of the glasses. Uh, I've had a bunch of failed prints that, you know, don't make it very far and they just look like this. And uh, I've had a couple that have actually been very nicely shaped glasses bodies that look like this. And uh, this one I've been using to test paint. This was the first one that actually was shaped appropriately so that the glasses could, like the actual safety glasses could snap into it. And uh, I'm hoping that this thing printing right now is the final iteration of that body print. It takes like three and a half hours with a raft. So it's not a, uh, a short term deal. But all of the little odds and ends that fit around the edges of the glasses are already printed. So while this goes, I'm going to go outside and start painting. So I'm out here now behind the hacker space where they've got the, uh, the paint table. And I've been playing with different finishes for these glasses. The other day, I just used some paint that they had laying around, and it was this sort of silver paint, and I got that kind of finish. And uh, just this afternoon, played with the uh, the weathering in between that a little bit, which I way overdid. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to figure out the uh, the weathering. So, just now, I tried some of this uh, rust-oleum metallic, and it made 
in one coat this look extremely shiny already like almost too shiny so I think that I'm gonna be able to put two coats of this on and then do a lot of weathering and it's gonna come out really nicely so 3d printing isn't necessarily the most precise of fabrication techniques. So some of the pieces, especially these little brackets uh, and like the stuff that the gears have to fit onto and things like that, need some touch-up work. Uh, also removing like the raft from the bottom of the large goggle piece, I'll need to do some sanding in order to make that all look good. So some of that can be done with regular sandpaper, but to do a lot of it quickly, I'm going to be using a big uh, belt sander here because I'm lazy. I'm getting really sick of shaking rattle cans today. So the print of the main body is complete and I'm absolutely thrilled to uh, announce that the safety glasses are now a snap fit in the frame. So that's perfect. But this uh, raft is quite problematic, so I'm going to sand it away. Now you've got to remember that sanding something like this is generating a lot of heat and it can actually start to melt the plastic. So if you're using some sort of motorized sander to remove a raft and you're not just using sandpaper, uh, be very careful that you don't overheat the workpiece and actually deform it. Once everything was painted, I glued all the pieces together. This required a lot of super glue, but I also used a little bit of hot glue as filler for the parts that weren't quite snug enough. And then I put super glue in on top of that. If you're assembling a set of these and you want all the moving parts to work on both sides, you need to make sure that all the gears are spinning freely before you glue the, the gear assembly together. And on the other side with the uh, wire ring that comes down in front of the eye, you need to make sure that the tab at the back of the holder for the wire ring is positioned properly so that it can act as a stopper and make sure that the ring will actually halt in front of your eye and then away from the glasses. So I have most of this glued together and I think it's looking really cool. I even have the, uh, the little wire in here that's going to come down over the uh, right eye and uh, with like some sort of other colored filter lens or something like that. I don't know, it just looks steampunky. But uh, the next step is to actually weather this. So I'm going to, like the gear train that fits in over here, I'm going to weather separately because there's a lot of pieces that are covered up and then I'm going to glue that together. But uh, I played with some of these techniques on some test pieces the other day and basically I'm going to be using uh, black and orange and maybe a little bit of red acrylic paint and just sort of blotting it 
into all of the nooks and crannies and then wiping it away. And uh, I was able to get real good results on this piece yesterday or a couple days ago. And I think that I did that process like three or four times. So over the whole set of glasses, it's gonna take a while, but it ends up providing a really cool effect when you're done. Basically I'm mixing up either a muddy red or a muddy orange color, painting it all over the part, really trying to get it into the nooks and crannies, and then wiping off as much as I can with a damp paper towel. So that the paint basically looks like dirt and grime caked into all the hard to reach areas because they're the areas that didn't get clean. There. So that's only one pass and that already looks like completely different. This is all like really shiny and gold looking. This is like old brass. I'm probably gonna end up doing two coats of, or like two passes of weathering over the entire glasses. The process also seems to dull the surface finish, which is a good thing because the gold and silver spray paint that I used was really excessively bright to start with. The very last step in finishing these glasses was soldering on a copper ring instead of the steel bailing wire that I'd used as a placeholder earlier. I also decided that in comparison to the weathered glasses, the fresh metal surface of that ring looked way too bright, so I added a bit of watered down paint to sort of dull out the wire. So this project was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about Fusion 360, a lot about how to use 3D printers without completely losing my sanity, and how to finish and uh, weather plastic parts. So I'd never done any of those things before, and it's very interesting to uh, undertake projects that force you to learn new skills. So this certainly qualifies there. And I will absolutely be wearing my steampunk safety glasses in the stands at competition to uh, cheer on the team with a little bit of added steampunk style. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video and remember to subscribe for more. Also, if uh, anybody out there builds these glasses, I would love to see uh, pictures or video of other people trying the same project because different takes on the same project are always really interesting. And uh, I don't know, you'll probably do a lot of the paint better than me because this is my first time trying any of that. So thanks for watching.